I thought I'd post a quick video on C++ and WISE, but I'll briefly go over the methods to post and stop events. This video will also assume you already have WISE integrated into your Unreal project and that your project has C++ code. There's plenty of videos out there how to do this already, so go and check them out. So yeah, let's get started. I went ahead and set up two events in WISE, one for playing a looping low health sound and one for stopping the looping low health sound. Um, instead of stopping, you can also choose to break the loop if you wanted. In most cases you won't need two events, but if you're in a situation where you want another sound to play, after the looping sound stops, for example, a deep breath or a beep off the player fully recovers their health or shield, then, you know, it might be useful. In the build.cs, we'll first add AK Audio to our public dependency module names. This will allow us to add wise dependencies into the project and we can begin the C++ coding. If you're struggling to find the build.cs, you can go into your project folder, click source, your project name, click and drag the file into Visual Studio. In our actor header, we'll then include AK Audio event, which will allow us to set up our properties. I've chosen to use the specifiers of edit defaults only and blueprint read only, but you can change these to suit your needs. After that, we'll then declare a function for playing the wise event, taking the parameters of the AK Audio event and a ball to decide where or not this sound should be stopped when the actor is attached to is destroyed. This function will return an integer that we'll use as the event ID. Then we'll declare one more function for stopping the event, which will also take an integer for the event ID and fade out time in milliseconds. Next, in our character script, we'll start by including our AK Gameplay Statics header. This is essentially your cheat sheet, so definitely refer to this when working with Wise and C++. Now we can begin creating our functions. We start off by adding in the parameters and then creating a local variable for the playing ID that will be initialized with an invalid value. We can then check if the event is valid, and if so, create a null callback variable. Since AK Gameplay Statics post event returns the playing ID, this is what we'll set our local variable ID to. For playing our sound, we can post the event using the event function parameter as our event. This act to play the sound on, although this will play on the root component of the actor. An integer value of zero for the callback mask, although we don't need to worry about this for now. Our null callback local variable for the event callback. Once again, we don't need to worry about this in this video. And lastly, our boolean function parameter to determine if this is stopped when the attached actor is destroyed. I also logged an error message in case the event is invalid. Lastly, return our playing ID. As for our stopping function, we'll once again set up the parameters, and if the event ID is valid, we'll execute our stop action on that instance and set the fade out time to our other function parameter. As I mentioned earlier, you can execute a break action here if you want to stop the loop after it finishes instead. After that, we return an invalid ID as this instance is no longer playing. Now that's completed, we'll be able to set our character class defaults. I went ahead and made a quick way to test what we just made using a button press and our two functions, leveraging the event ID. This approach doesn't use the other U property, and as you can hear, it works just fine. We can even increase the fade out time if we want. If you wanted to use a stop or break action, here's how you might do it. To call these in code, you can even reference the AK audio event by path or property and then call the function. In the next C++ and Wise video, I'll be going over how we can post an event via an AK component instead, as well as use RTPCs. As you may have noticed, this is my first video that leans more towards a tutorial format, as well as my first video that uses my voice, so let me know how I did. I hope this video helped you, and if you enjoyed it, or feel that there's a better way to do anything that I showed in the video, leave a comment so that we can increase the quality of the information. Thanks for watching.